I'm Abby Phillips with the Finance News Network, and today I'm talking with Chairman David, aka Daddy Perlmutter from Webit Nano. Webit Nano is a leading developer of semiconductor memory technology. Daddy, welcome to the network. Thank you for having me here. First up, you're a veteran of the semiconductor industry. You worked for a company that people might be aware of called Intel. Could you tell us a little bit more about your background? Well, thank you. It's, I don't think you have enough time. I'll try to be very short. I, I'm working in the semiconductor industry for 45 years now. Uh, I started my career. Nobody knew what a semiconductor is. It was considered as a bizarre, some bizarre technology on the side. Who will care? And in the 45 years, it became to be probably the most important. It's like uh, semiconductors for the digital world is like oil to the industry world. You can't consider factories without and uh, with, uh, without oil. The world will not move literally without semiconductors. This is how important it is. It's a trillion dollar business. Uh, as part of my career at Intel, uh, I basically developed uh, or led the development of the most important uh, products from the Pentium that was the charger for the PC revolution. Uh, I created products into that created the uh, the cloud and data center. Uh, I created product that uh, brought uh, mobility to notebooks and Wi-Fi and uh, anything that people use today and live with it without even thinking uh, and thinking that always happened and existed. Uh, they all existed in the past 30 it generated in the past 30 years or less. Uh, and I'm very proud and happy to be part of this. Now, most people are familiar with flash memory storage and SSD drives, but your RAM technology is a little different. Could you tell us more? The way a flash stores memory is by capturing electrons. Whoever remembers what they had studied in physics in some place. Uh, electrons are the parts of the atom that are circling around the atom. If you capture them, and store them and uh, hope that they will not uh, move away. Uh, if you have enough electrons, then it's considered to be one. If you don't have electrons, it's a zero. Uh, you could hear that it's very tough to get it smaller because the amount of electrons being stored in a memory cell is getting smaller and smaller when you uh, try to shrink the sizes. Uh, and there's a lot of reliability because electrons don't like to stay in one place. It's like Little children, you move the eye away from them, they disappear. Uh, what we do, our technology is, st we have a very unique technology that uh, uh, changes the resistance of a cell. The resistance is a resistance to move electricity. If it doesn't move electricity, like you turn the switch off in your light uh, bulb at home, no, no light. If you turn it on, there is light. That's what we do. That allows us to shrink the cells and make them more reliable because their ability to store information is now not dependent on this uh, elusive uh, particle called electron. It's uh, easier to store. I'm oversimplifying, of course, but it's a completely different way to store the information because at the end of the day, what you want to know, <laughs> do we have a, a one or a zero this out the digital world? And the moment you have that, you could store pictures, you could store music, you could store whatever information, whatever you want. And Adi, what are the advantages of RAM over flash? Uh, you mentioned SSDs and storage and devices like that. We are not focusing on this world. It is a more complex uh, technology for us. We are focusing on what we call embedded memory, where you have a device that wants to store information into this one. The advantages are in multiple parameters. I'll start with the easier one to understand. It, it is more reliable. <clears throat> it store information for longer period of time and for non-volatility is important. Uh, it has significantly low power. Uh, it has um, uh, ability to integrate, to Im be embedded into other semiconductor devices in small geometries, which means you could go to a more advanced technology and still use a memory inside your chip, which is very important when you talk about especially small devices. So, and the last but not least is cost. 
uh, people are, you know, it's uh, in this market especially, uh, people expect uh, to have lower costs so they could make more money and sell a higher volume. And I think with all that respect, uh, RIRAM is way better than a flash. And could you comment on the possible applications of RIRAM? Where could it be used? It could be used everywhere. We talk to people that uh, are planning to develop devices for the automotive car industry. So it could be in cars. Um, one of the big things for every device is operated by, by battery called power management. Uh, you kind of hold your phone and you think everything is wonderful, but you need to manage where it's on, when it's off, uh, to save the battery. It's a very complex device. Uh, we could uh, we are talking to people to put uh, a RIRAM inside these devices. Uh, we talked about Internet of Things, devices that people are putting and storing. It goes into uh, small devices that try to do uh, artificial intelligence calculations. Uh, in order to do uh, this calculation, there's a lot of parameters that have to be stored on a chip. And you want to make it on a chip. I always give comparisons of... Uh, you know, when I joined semiconductors, there used to be 40,000 devices on a chip. Today, there are uh, more than 200 billion units called transistors on a chip. So this is, uh, you know, orders of magnitude. So this industry is continuously looking for the ways to improve, get things better, smaller, more cost-effective, uh, that you could do more things and... Uh, less power consuming. And given there's such a wide range of applications for RERAM, what sort of potential customers have expressed interest so far? And what are the areas you're targeting in regards to commercialization? Well, I'm not going to talk anything about the customer before we have something to announce. Um, but uh, we're talking to customers in all the areas we talked about. There's a huge amount of interest to move away from flesh in this market because Flash is not fulfilling many of the parameters that they need for the future. And I think RIRAM is a huge opportunity. It's probably as a replacement for, um, to Flash, it comes out to be probably the only or most significant way to replace a Flash in this market. And what's the future roadmap and what should investors keep an eye out for in the next six months? You know, between the time we created the technology until it goes into your hands, let's say, it takes a lot of gates. Uh, uh, first gate is what we call a foundry. These are the big factories that the manufacture semiconductor devices. Uh, this is a huge, these are multi-billion dollar, to build a, to build a semiconductor factory it could be a multi-billion dollar uh, into the, the very uh, top uh, notch, uh, uh, tens of billions of dollars of cost to manufacture. So these are big, uh, and they are very conservative. They want to make sure that uh, everything is perfect. So this is our first stage. This is the first gate we need to do. We already signed two deals with uh, factories. So our first job for the coming year is to sign up more foundries, and we are getting paid for signing up with the foundry. We get paid because we give them a license fee to use our technology. And then in parallel, we work with their customers while developing products. So this is another thing that we spend uh, big time on for the next year uh, in order to create this product. And they pay us licensing fees. And then we go into when we have a product that is sold into devices, and then we are going to get paid royalties. But that's going to take, not going to happen next year. And, but I think the, the opportunities are huge and we are vo working very hard. And we have an extremely experienced and talented team that do understand this business and this uh, technology and this market. It's not easy. The customers are extremely technology dependent. They understand technology. They'll go into every small nuance. And, uh, and in some cases, they need to spend money in the factories to adapt to this technology. So this is a big deal. Uh, it's a tedious process, but I think we are progressing quite well uh, to make sure that we do all that, but it requires patience. Finally, WeBit Nano is supporting Semiconductor Australia 2024. Could you tell us why you are involved? This is a very important move because 
We are almost 10 years now in the Australian market. And there's a huge amount of training to explain to the Australian public what a semiconductor is. Semiconductor brought into the life, uh, was brought into the, the light of day to most people in the past two years because of these geopolitical problems between China and the US and most of the factories of semiconductors are in Taiwan. Uh, you could understand the anxiety of uh, uh, situation. The semiconductor industry has its own, as I try to explain in a very tough manner, a lot of complexities that will require first understanding of the public, that they are the investors. What is it? How would they measure and understand that this is a good deal or a bad deal, or what do they do? Uh, if they don't understand it, and the other uh, make wrong investment decisions or don't invest at all. And even sharing together, I think this is a very complex situation. So uh, in the semiconductor industry, there's a, a big term called competition. By the way, most of the companies we don't even compete with because we are on different markets. Uh, but even if we compete, there's a lot of place to co collaborate and cooperate because few things have to be promoted together because it's too tough for a small company or even big companies. When I worked at Intel, we used to talk to even competitors because we had to promote some regulations with respect to semiconductor manufacturing. If you don't do it together, you're all dead. If you're doing it together, you have no opportunities, and now you go compete. And I hope that the Australian market will get better understanding <clears throat> and better success for these uh, Australian companies, which most of them are quite young and trying to break out to, to the world as big companies. Dottie Perlmutter, thank you for your time. You're welcome and have a great day.